Welcome to Look Around the Confederation. I'm your host of the evening, Moose. And before we get started, please remember, the views and opinions expressed on the, this broadcast is not necessarily the views and opinions of the SCV, it's GEC, nor in divisions, brigade camps, or any other subsidiaries. How is everybody doing in Dixieland tonight? We have a great show for you planned. We have Mr. Jamie Graham on to talk about his candidacy from Army of Northern Virginia Commander. I'm going to save that so I don't steal of any of uh, Mr. Jamie's thunder. I've been known to do that and talk way over my time, allotted time limit. So we're going to try to get into the news pretty quickly. Uh, real quick, I do want to remind everybody, we had some great news for the future of SCV Chat this past Monday. We started our Patreon. This is a way to support us to make sure we get better equipment, continue to, continue to take back the narrative in more ways than one. We have a lot of special projects planned, so please make sure you go support us. For just $10 a month, you can become a real chat head. And of course, make sure that SCV Chat continues to fight hard against the woke narrative against our heroes, our ancestors, and our honorable veterans. So, again, thank you all. Uh, there is some perks to becoming a Patreon member, so uh, make sure you kind of check those out. One of them I'll kind of go ahead and reveal is uh, we're going to start having some in-credit scenes on every episode of Look Around and SCV Chat. And if you're a Patreon, guess what? Your name is going to be on these credits. So you can contact me more for that information either here on the chat page or you can go to Harrison SCV on Facebook and you can find me there. But I want to thank everybody for coming out. I see Army of Tennessee Councilman Carl Jones on Faversham, Carl. Uh, Austin, good to see you. Uh, no, Archie, good to see you. Uh, Robert from Arizona. Uh, Jack DuPont, my 5th uh, Brigade aide-de-camp. Good to see you, Jack. Al, good to see you from Middle Tennessee. Uh, William, good to see you. Ryan, good to see you. Tony, good to see you from Virginia. Let's share it out, Army of Northern Virginia. I need a big crowd from y'all tonight. Again, we're talking about your candidates for office, so make sure you go around and watch all our episodes on the people running for the Army of Northern Virginia and figure out who you want to support. This is a great time to ask questions, to get to know this person on a personal and professional level. Uh, let's see, where was I? Donald, good to see you. Ah. Uh, Good to see you, brother. <laughs> uh, Stanley, good to see you. Mark, Bobby, ah, Dr. Mitchum from New Mexico this evening. The most sharp-dressed man in the SCV, past Commander Chief Paul Gramlin Jr., good to see you. We will be matching this year, not on the way I intended, but my Hank shirt is coming for the oratory contest, and I feel bad for all of you for having to see me in tie-dyed because – I wear navy blue most days. <laughs> That's half of my wardrobe, maybe 90% of it actually. So I don't know how I'm going to look in tie-dye. I don't know if I've worn a tie-dye shirt since middle school. Jason, good to see you again from Virginia. I love to see my Virginia crowd here tonight. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, uh, Alan from the Lieutenant General Richard Taylor Camp 1308. Good to see you. Uh, let's see here. Jack says he took his adjutant training today. You can look at camp and uh, camp commander and camp adjutant training from the national SCV from our national membership coordinator, Eric Pavetti. You should be seeing that in your emails. If you want to look at it, please contact us and we'll try to help you get scheduled on their next scheduled training session. It's great for all camp commanders and adjutants. I took it. It helped me become a better camp commander or camp commander, camp adjutant. And uh, I can't thank Eric enough for doing that. Uh, I forgot it was today and was late by an hour and 25 minutes. Jack, you are making me look bad. You're my aide de camp. <laughs> uh, I'm going to reprimand you by making you pick uh, trash off the ground at Bovar. We'll figure something out, Jack. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make you just get everybody's food at the next brigade meeting, and I will come and pick you up uh, and make you come to this, that brigade meeting. Uh, I'll do something for you, Jack. Uh, thank you, Commander. Um, so let's uh, let's dive into some camp news real quick. Uh, we got a couple more minutes before Mr. Jamie comes on. 
Uh, bless his heart. He's back behind the scenes. He can't really say anything right now. So I can say either good or bad things about him and he can't stop me. Um, but first bit of news is going to come from my camp, the Samuel H. Poe camp number 255 out of Wayne County, Mississippi. We celebrated our 30th anniversary of rechartering last year and we made these special edition challenge coins for $10 a pop. So, uh, I am in the process of mailing a couple out. Uh, I know someone's in the chat right now that's been waiting on this Camp Challenge coin for a while. Sir, we are getting to you. Uh, my apologies for taking so long. My camp had a couple of events, and I've been focused on that. But uh, these are about to get mailed out. So if you would like one again, you can contact me. I'm the camp's adjutant at Harrison SCV, or you can contact our camp commander, my father, at Forest SCV, all on Facebook. Uh, next bit is the General Nathan Bedford Forrest 200th Society. This was made a couple years ago to celebrate the 200th birthday of General Nathan Bedford Forrest. And this challenge coin, patch, and label pin is what you'll get if you join. It's $200 to join. Those $200 go to General Nathan Bedford Forrest's boyhood home to help preserve it and to help reclaim his narrative. Our poor General Forrest is probably been uh, attacked more than most of our ancestors and heroes. And so uh, he, he desperate, uh, he definitely needs some love and help. Uh, so if you want to help General Forrest out, please go help and join the General Forrest 200 Society. I know that they're only going to accept 200 members. This is going to be a special deal. I'm hoping I'm able to save up enough money to join very soon. Uh, if you don't know, half my family is named after General Forrest. <laughs> So I'm definitely hoping to join. I think my father did beat me to it. <laughs> so I'm going to have to try to join soon. But I know they only have a couple spots left available. For, so make sure you do that today. I think you can contact the Tennessee Division on more information about this if you need it. Of course, the Army of Tennessee Workshop is May 4th at our national headquarters at Columbia, Tennessee. It will be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the conference room. There are only 65 spots available for this workshop due to room size, so register early to guarantee your spot. If you have not registered yet, then I have some bad news for you. It is now $20 with no lunch guarantee. That's why you got to stay on top of things, unlike me. So make sure, once again, that you uh, check this out. They have some great speakers lined up with membership coordinator Eric Pavetti on commander and adjutant training. Army of Tennessee Councilman Carl Jones on Building a Better Camp, and Army of Tennessee Commander Jimmy Hill on Community Involvement. And they will have a couple other speakers, I think, but that is subject to chain. I think change. I think they're still trying to get them nailed down. But also on that date is our pilgrimage and homecoming event to our National Confederate Museum. Uh, at 11 a.m., we will have our keynote speaker, Miss Jenny, who is the President General of the United Daughters of the Confederacy. Music will be by strings of concession. Uh, individual camps, brigades, divisions, or, and other organizations are encouraged to bring a floral tribute and be announced as they lay their floral arrangement. The services will be moved inside the museum if weather is not helping us. And make sure you bring a lawn chair, sunblock, and a cooler. And remember, no alcohol allowed. That's going to be a great event. Of course, we will be broadcasting it here on SCV Chat, hopefully. So, again, make sure if you can uh, make it, to show up to that event. Ah, uh, me and that event has passed. How long have y'all been letting me talk about this event and it passed? Wait, no, that's in 2020. It's 2024, right? It's it's been a long day. It really has. Um, luckily, I don't have to butcher that that poor flyer anymore. I felt bad for the people that sent that in. I could never learn how to say it. Our Louisiana brethren always uh, butchered me in the comments, which thank y'all for that. But uh, yeah, my apologies. I, I should have already been taking that out, but here is another event in Louisiana. If you didn't miss that one, the army of trans Mississippi national SUV event will be held on April 6th, Saturday, from uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Mansfield State Historical Site. This will be the first annual ATM national event. Guest speakers will include Scott Deerman, Mansfield Site Manager Retired, Charles Ray, Army of Trans-Mississippi Councilman, Dr. John Goddard, oh yeah, Goddard, and uh, Past Commander-in-Chief, the Lone Ranger, Chuck McMichael. Music will be provided by Pine Knox. 
Mark your calendars today for this historic event to celebrate the 160th anniversary of the Battle of Manfield and the 125th uh, anniversary of the Louisiana Division. How awesome is that? Uh, our brethren in the Louisiana Division are celebrating 125 years, and of course, the Battle of Mansfield is Mansfield is celebrating 160 60th. That is, a, of course, two special events that line up perfectly together. I'm hoping to make it myself, so I hope to see everybody there. I will try to go live a couple times that day and share in the festivities. Uh, real quick, though, admission for this event is four dollars. It is free for anybody over or the fee is for anybody. Uh, over 12 and under 62. This includes the museum. Please bring a chair for the event. You may also want to bring a clue, uh, small cooler for snacks and drinks. Don't miss out on this amazing event. You can contact Army of Trans-Mississippi Commander J.C. Hanna for more in information and Louisiana Division Commander Mr. Brian for any more. We do have some comments I need to look at. I, I, let me see how bad I'm getting butchered in the chat. Um... Uh, Victor Smith from Private William Riley Milton Camp 741 is from Florida in the chat. Um, oh, North Carolina in the chat. Great to see you again. Share this out, uh, Army of Northern Virginia. Let's get this out to as many camps, brigades, divisions as possible. We need y'all's help to make sure all these election videos get shared out. Uh, Victor, you didn't send me in anything for the story this week. Not, not, no, I, I just checked my email. So you, you, Victor, check if that email sent and I'll make sure to have it on next week's episode. Uh, Kyle Thompson from the uh, Kentucky Division Commander. I forgot about that for a second. Um, <laughs> people were making fun of me for skipping, saying, trying to say that, uh, event name that reenactment that that just wouldn't have went well some of y'all have actually came for that and that's sad uh <laughs> uh lieutenant commander chief walter d donnie kennedy says he just wants me to hear say the name one more time i'm sorry commander i i'm not going to uh butcher that um kyle uh, commander thompson you you did send me in some stuff the uh i message and i keep forgetting to put it on so um I'm going to put that on next week. Again, my apologies. I just remember you texted me some information. So I'll uh, try to put it on. Uh, good evening, Mr. Don. Uh, our Chief of Heritage Operations, Mr. Ron Kennedy, is also in the chat. Um, good to see you, uh, Chief Kennedy. Uh, okay, uh, Army of Tennessee Councilman Carl Jones has just brought uh, some news uh, that an Alabama camp in I uh, no Carl no um are, are Carl is this a real event are you just trying because those are some words the wow um mm. don't know I have a problem with pronunciation right like this isn't just like <laughs> Uh, reenacting the <laughs> Carl, Carl, I, I thought that was an actual event. <laughs> I, I, I've been up all day, man. <laughs> I'm on three hours of sleep. Um, <laughs> uh, Commander Kennedy, I'll, um, I'll put that into next year's episode. I, I'll say something funny. Just give it time. There'll be something I, I can't pronounce. Uh, but real quick, let's uh, end out on the news. The Battle of Pleasant Hill kickoff party will be April 6th at 6 p.m. at Mansfield Female College Museum. Come join us for an award ceremony, fellowship, and entertainment as we celebrate our 160th anniversary. On the menu are, are cocktails and mocktails. Um, and, of course, if you're going to go to that, you might as well go to this other great event happening Friday, April 12th through Sunday, April 14th, the 44th Annual Battle of Pleasant Hill. The schedule includes on Friday at 10 a.m. from 1 p.m. will be a school day. 10 a.m. Uh, Saturday, there will be a parade. At 11 a.m., parking and camps open. At 10, uh, 11.30 a.m., guest speaker will be happening at uh, Battlefield Hall. Uh, at 1.30 p.m., opening ceremonies. At 2 p.m., the battle and reenactment. 
and at 7 p.m. the period ball and court presentation. Whew. And uh, a memorial ceremony. That's, that's awesome. Great. Uh, at Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., camps will start to open. At 10 a.m., church services will start. At 1 p.m., crowning ceremony of the 2024 Miss Battle of Pleasant Hill. And at 2 p.m., the battle will start that day. Entry fee is $5 per person. Uh, for people age 5 and under, is free. Free parking and the reenactments and activities will take three miles north of Pleasant Hill. And, of course, our lovely brothers in the Louisiana division are having their 125th annual division reunion May 17th through the 18th. This year is hosted by the Lieutenant General Richard Taylor Camp 1308 of Shreveport, Louisiana. The reunion is going to be also held in Shreveport, Louisiana, the last Confederate capital of Louisiana, also the headquarters of the Army of Trans-Mississippi. Um, the hotel, the host hotel, is just uh, adjacent to the site of the residence of General Kirby Smith. The camp is working hard on planning this and making a great event, so make sure you plan to attend. Hotel information, of course, is below, as well as credentials. It is on www scvtaylorcamp.com. And last bit of news, and we're going to wrap it up. Well, real quick, I almost for forgot about the Florida Division Reunion, which will be held June 1st, the 54th annual uh, Florida Division Reunion, so make sure to go to that. And last bit of news is going to be coming from our National Confederate Museum, specifically Elm Springs. So Elm Springs is getting rid of a hallway uh, that was not original to the house. So, of course, here's the entry, fee, uh, entry hall project. They're trying to make the, um, the Elm Springs as historically accurate as we can. So uh, make sure you, if you want to support that project, go support it. Uh, you can do that either at the Friends of Elm Springs with a monthly donation, or you can go to, of course, um, the Elm Springs Facebook page or the SCV website and probably get some more information. All right, everybody, we are done with the news, so it is now time. We're going to take a quick Pop-Tart break, and tonight's Pop-Tart break is going to be sponsored by our Patreon. So if you thought I was going to stop talking about that, I have some very bad news for you. The SCV chat has launched its Patreon. You can go to www.patreon.com slash SCV chat to become a real chat head today, as well as the scvchat.com is is relaunching. Yes, it has taken me this long to rework this whole page. It has been a nightmare and a half, but our website of SCV Chat is coming on. And if you have an event this April Confederate History Month, month please email us at scvyouthoutreach at gmail.com and we'll put your event on our calendar. Of course, this calendar is only available to SCV, OCR, or UDC members. So make sure if you need to sign up for our website, you send me all the available information. But our website's coming back and our Patreon. So support our Patreon today and become a real chat head and get some crazily great benefits. I want to thank you guys all for watching. And when we get back, uh, Mr. Jamie Graham will be on to talk about his candidacy, Army of Northern Virginia Commander. There is a place nestled in the rolling farmland of southern Middle Tennessee. A home constructed in 1837, nearly lost to the ravages of war. Saved by a servant and a Confederate general. A place where families loved and lost. If walls could talk, what stories could be told? If a place, a home, can feel love, loss, pain, surely this is one of those places. Nearby is a more recent structure, and inside are the stories of heroes and heroines, stories of battles won and lost. Stories of sacrifices made by the people of its native soil. 
a place that will tell the true and complete story of the Southland and the war fought for its freedom. From the causes that led to the conflict to the modern day struggles to protect Southern history. Historic Elm Springs and the Confederate Museum at Elm Springs are the general headquarters for the sons of Confederate veterans. A place where the story of the Southland and its historic struggle is preserved and told. Come and discover your history. I would like everybody to help me welcome on past South Carolina Division Commander and current commander of Camp 132, Mr. Jamie Graham. Thank you for coming on, Commander. Uh, I cannot wait to hear uh, your platform and everything you have going on. Uh, just, I guess, first, uh, introduce yourself to everybody, tell, your, uh, tell a bit about yourself, and tell us about your SCV career. All right. Well, good evening, Confederates. Uh, my name is Jamie Graham. For those of you who don't know it, um, I'm running for the position of AEV commander. Um, I was born and raised uh, in Conway, South Carolina. Uh, my wife, Lisa, and I have five children and 11 grandchildren. Um, I served uh, I served with 18th Airborne Corps at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and I was uh, involved in Operation Urgent Fury. Uh, I did 10 years of active duty in the Army, serving as a military police officer. Um, after I left the Army, I come home and I worked with Dory County Police for some years. Um, got tired of living in poverty and uh, I opened up uh, Absolute Pest Control. I've uh, been running uh, that business now for 25 years here in Conway. Um, while I was in the Army, I uh, majored in constitutional law at the University of Maryland and criminal law at, the, at Central Texas College. Um, I am the immediate past South Carolina Division Commander. Um, I've held numerous positions on the camp uh, brigade and division level. Um, I've also served on the A and B disciplinary committee, and I have served on the S and B national graves and monuments committee. Well, that's uh, that's awesome, uh, Commander. Um, tell us a bit about your platform and uh, why you're running for Army of Northern Virginia at command. Um, yeah, today we've got a lot of issues facing our heritage. Um, and, you know, we always talk about the issues that are, that are out there. Um, but, and I've always considered myself a solution kind of guy. I want to find solutions and solve these problems. And, you know, to confront these battles that we have out here, our first thing that we have got to work on is we've got to repair communications. And, you know, and I've been listening to this, to candidates say this for years and years. And the, the issue is, how do we fix it? Not just say we need to fix, it, but we need to come up with some solutions. Because um, as A and B commander, I need to be approachable. I need to be in constant contact with each of the divisions. And because my job as A and B commander will be to put the information out in a timely and, and reasonable fashion on a regular basis. Um, and one of those things is because I'm the go between myself and, of course, A and B councilman will be the go between between those divisions as well as the GEC. And we've got to get this information out there. So we have to come up with some solutions. And I have some good ideas, I think, that can help some things that we've done here in South Carolina. Um, and I would love to be able to bring that forward. Um, one of the other things I think we need to be discussing is our websites. We've got some issues with them. Um, I think I know a couple of things that we can do. And, and there's a few problems there that actually I'm not even sure if the GEC is aware of. And so I really want to get in here so we can start working on some of these problems. And the other side of that is, you know, we've got members out here. We got some smart guys out here. And we need to be listening to them. They've got some really good ideas. I mean, just a month or so back, I was talking to a guy in, in West Virginia who's throwing some really good ideas out here. And these are things that need to be able to get up to the GEC so we can have these discussions and talk about them. 
Um, and that's, that's where I want to go. I want to work on this. I also want to start working on some of the infighting. Again, it's one of the problems that we face. Um, and that's, that's where I want to go. I want to get in here, dive into it at first and start on it. Well, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Um, uh, happy to hear about, uh, about websites. That's, uh, something that uh, I've noticed that the current generation, mine, uh, and even my father's generation, the first thing they always do is, uh, Google. And if they find a website, they're going to click on it. And so, uh, I, I'm definitely happy to see you, uh, see that, or go after that, I guess. Um, of course, uh, in today's day and age, sadly, the SCV doesn't have the best personal or public image, I'll say. Uh, thanks for my Wi-Fi for cutting out, but um, <laughs> we don't have the best uh, public image, and we kind of need to go up, up, upon reclaiming the narrative is what we've been saying out here. But uh, you have any ideas for that? Um, bear with me, because I got a lot of ideas there. Right. I, I've been saying this for years that not only do we need to think outside the box, we need to do outside the box. Um, and and, and it, th this may take a few minutes because there's a, there's a lot of scenarios here that we need to, to look at. Um, now, here locally in my camp, I'll give you a couple of things that we've done. Um, you know, it's, it's not that we have a bad image because we know who we are. I mean, we're everyday folks, just like our neighbors, but we love our ancestry and we love the Confederacy and we know what it means. But when you have an awful media out there, and that's why we, we've got a terrible media out there, anything to do with Confederate, they portray it badly. So the only way we take back this narrative is we've got to get into the fight, step outside that box and dive in. Now, one of the things that I did a few years back, um, and, and I'll, I'll make it short and sweet, but. We ended up, my camp, set up with our brigade, and we cleaned up four different slave cemeteries in two different black uh, neighborhoods in Orrey County. Now, in, in doing that, we also found a black Confederate, and when we cleaned up that particular cemetery, I had three generations of that man's family there. And, But as much as the media around here hated to do it, they couldn't hide from the fact that the sons of Confederate veterans are the ones who stepped out and cleaned those cemeteries up. Mm -hmm. So use the tools that you have in your communities because we got several good uh, radio hits on it, several good news articles. So when people are reading this and they're, you know, this is how you change that image. This is one of the ways you change the image. You know, they're sitting there going, these guys aren't bad because we got two black communities in my county that think the SCV is the greatest thing since ice cream. They tried to raise money to get this done. One guy had been trying to get the cemetery cleaned up for 20 years and couldn't get help, couldn't get nothing. And we stepped up and we helped him. You know, so this is just one of the ideas. But now, you take what Mechanized Calvary is doing. These guys are going out to different bikes, uh, these bike rallies and shows, and they're out there talking to people. Again, showing who they are, working out here to change this image. When we go out and do our festivals and we have our recruitment tents, you got to step away from that tent. I do it all the time. I'll walk away from that tent and go over and find the VFW tent. I got something in common with these guys. And I strike up conversations and tell them about the things that we're doing. And this is just a small way of reaching out and getting into the communities. But that's, you know, you, we look at the Telegraph and the different things that the Kennedy brothers are doing. I mean, we're out here really getting stuff done. And there's so many different avenues, but the key, and this, this goes back to the number one problem that we've got, it goes back to communications. Because what we need to be doing is sharing ideas. And that's one of the things I love about what you guys are doing here, because we have the opportunity to share some of these ideas so people can actually hear some of the things that we're doing elsewhere. Um, and I want to hear from the membership out there, because I know there are other people doing things out there that I want to hear. And that's that's where we got to go with this. If we're going to make this work, we got to get outside that box and do outside that box. I uh, definitely love that. Um, yeah, community involvement is definitely something that is desperately needed. And ways of uh, helping people think. Uh, I know I work best when I'm shooting off ideas with someone else. 
So uh, I, I do very much like that plan, uh, Commander. Um, what was I? I had a certain question I was going to ask. Oh, yeah. Feel free to talk about uh, a topic as long as you want. This this next uh, 40 minutes is all yours, Commander. So uh, don't don't worry about it. Um, uh, Carl Jones might not think so, but <laughs> I saw what he did to you. <laughs> Carl did me dirty, man. Uh, <laughs> well, we could go back to the conversation you and I were having beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, and you remember who Carl is. So love you, Carl. <laughs> we love you, Carl. And uh, when you come on for your interview, just know I will remember this. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. Uh, can you share some specific changes you would like to implement if elected to the, uh, general, ex uh, executive council? Um, I don't know necessarily how I would go presenting it as changes. Um, but some of the ideas that I would like to see us work on one, we talk about communications. Um, here in South Carolina, some years back, we actually set up a communication system um, mm -hmm. where all of our camps, our brigade, and all of our division officers have a dedicated email. Mm -hmm. um, now, with that dedicated email, how that works is when, when I took over as camp commander again, um, the camp commander at the time who was outgoing, gives me the email address, gives me the new password. Now I take over. Same thing happened when Commander Smith took over for the, the division commander for me. I give him the password and he takes over. But what we have is a dedicated system, and we've been using these emails now, gosh, almost 12 years now, and mm -hmm. they actually work and they work very well. We get information out. And this is one of the things I think we need to start, again, going back to communications, but passing this information out. Um, the Virginia Division Commander, Tony Griffin, and I, we've actually talked about this as well. Um, maybe even looking at Virginia doing something similar. And, of course, Terry Clement and I have had this conversation. But it's one of the things we need to do is to make sure we can get our communication systems working better. And I want to step into that and see if the GEC, we can come up with some ideas to try to help the divisions. Because um, each of the divisions can do it on the division level. But so we can get this information so we can start sharing it. Another thing we need to work on, we'll go back to the website, um, sharing information. I get the telegraph from the website. Now, what I didn't realize about the telegraph, um, if you forward that telegraph out to your camp members, you can get kicked off the telegraph. You can get unsubscribed. Now, I didn't realize that until I got unsubscribed three times. Um, and, you know, when you've got... I guess we're somewhere between 26, 27,000 members. And my understanding, we only got roughly 1,700 people that have signed up for it. You know, we need to get out here and start working on this. And that's one of the plans that I have is to start getting out there, communicating with them so they can understand that. Um, as a matter of fact, I've already started working with some of the divisions to set up an email account where I've got the division officers already listed in this email um, that, and it doesn't matter if I'm not, if, if I'm not the next A and B commander, whoever is, they can have this email and the passwords. I'm setting it up so we have access to these division officers so we can start this communication process. Go ahead and get it started now. So, and, and you go back to the website. If you have commanders that have signed on and they're getting the telegraph and the, the different emails and stuff that are coming out. But it's just like in my case, as I get it on my personal email, I'll forward it over to my camp and then I'll forward it out to my membership from the camp. Um, but if I get kicked off of it, unknowing, then I can't get this information to my camp members. So you have to wonder how many people have gotten kicked off of it and don't know it. So this is one of the glitches that we need to work on. Um, I think our websites, we need to streamline. Um, it, you know, websites are either way too busy or not busy enough. And, and in our case, we have a tendency to get too busy. And I think National's website's a little bit too busy. 
it's not really user friendly. And one of the things working with South Carolina and our website, this is where your division commanders have to take an active part with their IT on their websites to make sure it, you keep it user friendly, not necessarily IT friendly. Um, I like the way you were talking about your father's generation, and your generation. Well, I'm part of the baby boomer generation. And, uh, and, and, and I hope Kennedy brothers don't take this wrong because I know where they are too. We're still trying to learn all this technology, but we're trying. So, but we need to work this where we can start making it a little bit more user friendly. I, uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Mr. Jamie, uh, we do have a question from the audience. Uh, I believe this is from a Virginia Division uh, member. Uh, so Jason Lloyd asks, uh, how do you plan on growing slash recruiting new members in the Army of Northern Virginia slash divisions? And uh, here's a big uh, question that's been asked a lot, retention uh, of current members. Well, I don't think that growth is one of our huge problems. Mm -hmm. um, we, we seem to do pretty good growing. Our biggest problem seems to be in retention. Um, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, our camps need to continue doing their due diligence as far as their recruiting efforts and so forth. Um, but again, we got to start thinking outside the box and it goes right back. Everything goes back to this one key, communications, sharing ideas. Um, my camp, for instance, we do pretty good with it. And we, uh, I mean, we, we got three festivals in the area. We set up our recruiting booths. We're out there talking to people. Um, we do a annual turkey shoot two weekends. We're out there. And of course you've got to step outside the box. You know, I, I'm a business owner and I work here. I, I have a pest control company and every day I'm outside meeting new people constantly in the area. And, I'm talking to people while I'm out there. I invite them to our turkey shoots, you know, and you'd be surprised the number of people that'll show up. But once you open that dialogue, you can talk to them. But, and that's just some of the things that we're doing in my camp. But what I want to do is I want to hear the ideas from these other camps because not everybody has the same festival, so to speak, that I have here. But it's one of the things that we do. Um, it... I don't know. It's you've got to get out there and talk with them. And when it when it comes to recruiting efforts, I think we really need to start looking more at the 40 year old crowd. Um, and I'm a firm believer in Sam Davis Christian Youth Camp and youth activities and programs that we have. But it's just like with my grandchildren. They love me to death, but getting them to sit down and listen to the old baby boomer, the old man talking, you know, they've got their own things, but the 40 year old crowd, I can talk to them because I kind of understand them. And those are the guys that we need to be pushing to recruit. Um, they're the ones who are going to spread that seed to their children, you know, but the 40 year old crowd, these guys, they finally got settled in. Their kids have, they're teenagers now, they're doing their own thing. And, you know, they're looking for something to do besides go fishing and hunting. So just a couple of things. I, uh, wow. Great. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, number, let's see here. Okay. In your opinion, what are, the most pressing challenges facing the sons of Confederate veterans? From the inside, communication and infighting. Um, from the outside, a god-awful media. Um, and it, it doesn't matter what we say or do, the media is not going to be our friend. Um, and what I've always tried to do when I've been in front of a camera, uh, let's, for instance, when the flag here in South Carolina came off the Confederate uh, Memorial, and I was chief of staff at the time, and of course, we were getting phone calls constantly. But uh, one of the things that I did with the media, I 
outflanked them. Yeah, you, know, you got to understand the media has been doing this to us for years. They've been outflanking us. They've been using Stonewall's tactics against us, and we haven't been paying attention. Um, but I control the narrative. I control the situation. Um, for instance, I had a reporter call me, and he wanted to come to my house right then. I told him, no, I'm still at work. Come at 5 o'clock when I get off work. And the fact of the matter was I was at home. But I'm still working. It lied to the guy because I, I run a home-based business. Um, but I made him wait. Give me time to get myself prepared. Get myself dressed, not in my work clothes, but dressed appropriately. I controlled that narrative. And then I made him meet me at a cemetery. And we did that interview at a cemetery. And I made it where I controlled the narrative. where There's nothing he could find to use against me. And that's what we have to do. Um, and, and, and I applaud the Kennedy brothers for this because they, they understand controlling this narrative and that's what we got to do. Not just take it back. We have to control it. That's awesome. I, again, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, kind of one of my last questions. So I'll, uh, again, ask the crowd, especially if you're in the army of Northern Virginia, he will be representing you if he wins this election. So uh, be asking some questions. I see a couple in the chat now. Some some states, statements, some ideas that I'll uh, probably share with Mr. Jamie. If he wants to share his thoughts on them, he can. Um, I'm here at your convenience, my friend. But uh, just be asking some questions. I'm on my last one. So, uh, you know, looking ahead, what do you see as key milestones or accomplishments for the SCV during your potential tenure on the General Executive Council? Well, one of the first milestones is getting an effective communication system set up. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's no perfect communications, and we understand that, but we do need to get it set up and get something operational so we can work. Um, mm -hmm. The glitches that we have in the website, we really need to get working on that because, believe it or not, this does have something to do with retention. Um, you got a 30-year-old kid who's wanting to talk and he's going to our website and he gets lost on it. We're not going to keep him. So we really need to get working on this. Um, the infighting, this is one of the huge things. Um, we, we had this as an issue in South Carolina when I took over as division commander. And... That was my main job at that point in time. I wanted to stop the infighting. And I think we've come a long way in South Carolina because we're not fighting anymore. We're actually working together. Um, and, you know, we, we've got some things that we need to, again, as far as communications, um, the a and commander's job is to be that go-between. And when a division has got something that needs to go to the GEC, it doesn't need to delay in wait. I mean, it, it disciplinary issues need to be handled, need to be handled quickly, not be drug out for three years, because those are the kind of things that'll create problems down the road for the SCV. So these are things that we need to get on top of and handle quickly. And, and I'm one of those kind of people. I don't like, you know, so when I work, when I come in at the end of the day, my reports are typed up and done that day. I don't like stuff sitting around. I want it done. And I'm, you know, that's, that's part of the businessman in me, you know, get it done, get it done now. But, uh, and I really want to work on the infighting. There's, you know, we, we've got, we've got different groups out there and, and, and I don't care whether it's the Virginia flaggers, mechanized Calvary, uh, UDC, um, all these people are out here trying to preserve our history, trying to preserve our heritage. And, and all of us have different avenues on how to do it, but they're all doing it. And I love each and every one of them for doing that because that's what we're here for. But when we're down in Charleston and I'm sitting in that room, I don't see any of these other groups. I see one thing. I see a, a group of men that share something with me that you can't buy and they can't give it to you. We share a God-given gift of a Confederate bloodline that's given to us by our ancestors. You can't buy it. 
And when I look across that room in there, I see one thing. I see SCD. And in that room with A&D, I see members of the A&D who are all SCD brothers. And I want us to all understand that and come back to that. You know, five years ago, I lost my home to uh, Hurricane Florence. A little over five years ago, Hurricane Florence, the floodwaters took my home. Um, and a lot of people that are listening to this will know that. Um, but at the same time, I also had a mild stroke. And the funny thing is, when I had that stroke and I was sitting in that hospital, when they got me out of there from doing the MRI and the CAT scans, you know who was sitting in that room waiting on me? My SCV Confederate brothers. They beat my children there. You know, um, when my house was flooded and my wife and I didn't have a home, my brothers and my family were there, but my SCV brothers were there also. Lord have mercy. Henry Richardson, our lieutenant commander in the division, he lives up in Fair Place, South Carolina. That's up in the mountains, almost in North Carolina, way on the other side. He, he stopped work for a week, loaded up his truck, brought his tools down, and come and slept in my camper to help me have a home. These are my brothers. And we all need to remember that's who we are. We are all brothers, Confederate brothers. And even though we're going to have different views and we're going to have different thoughts on how to get places, we're all brothers. We all got to work together to make this happen. That's my goals. Wow. Yeah. Uh, in, in fighting has uh, been something I, I've uh, tackled before as well. And so uh, I, I'm definitely happy to see that. Um, I guess you kind of answered uh, Tony's question. Uh, if you have anything you want to add to it, you can. But he, he was asking about infighting. You know, what are some of your ideas to stop or reduce infighting between different factions in the SCV? If you have anything you want to add to that, Mr. Jamie, you can. But you did just talk about it. So if you don't, that's okay. Well, if there's anything specific he wants me to talk about, I'd be more than glad to. Um, I, again, the key goes back to proper communications. I mean, that's communications and it, it's it's the key for everything that we're doing, whether it's email coming back and forth between the division and the GEC or being out in the public, talking to, to, to people you don't know, trying to change the narrative, uh, change the public opinion of us, um, you know, or whether it's talking with a, a different group, uh, the Virginia Flaggers and uh, Mechanized Cavalry who are all, no, well, not all of the Virginia flaggers are SCV. Now, all of Metcalf is SCV. And, and these guys, I mean, I love these guys. I mean, I've done some stuff with the, with, with the Metcalf, and they had so much fun uh, going out here, raising money to help keep backpacks for kids, finding, getting food and uh, shelter and stuff for homeless, uh, homeless people and uh, recovering addicts. As a matter of fact, we had... Uh, we did a cemetery cleanup, and I had one of the churches in Myrtle Beach show up, and they had groups of homeless and recovering addicts who come out to help us clean up the cemetery. And, and again, this goes back to public image. These people out here are seeing what we're doing out here, and they come out to help us. Um, and on that same token, those four cemeteries that we're, I talked about that we cleaned up, the black cemeteries, Two of those cemeteries happen to be in housing developments. And the very fun thing about this, when we set this up, um, when we got out there to start cleaning up, northerners who had moved down to the Myrtle Beach area, Myrtle's Inlet down in that area, they had come out to help us, had no clue who we were, but they actually were coming out and helping us clean up the cemeteries in their backyards. Of course, then they got a, a unique... Uh, invitation to find out who we were and uh so you've got people that moved down here with a whole new perception of who the scv is you know so it's all these kind of things that's going to work to stop the infighting going back to communications and working outside to change the public image couldn't agree better myself commander 
Uh, one quick question, not really a question, but again, one of those ideas that was thrown out there. Uh, Jason said he would like to see SEV, Army of Northern Virginia, and Division websites be similar to national that can share news updates, division and camp pictures, and updates on heritage defense. Uh, I'm guessing uh, public are pri and private, uh, some for just members and some we could release out to the public. Uh, but, you know, uh, what do you think about that? I think it's a good idea. Well, not only with the website, but as long as, as, as with communications, all of this tied in. Um, I do think it's a good idea. But again, uh, you'll have to streamline it mm -hmm. if it gets too busy. And, and again, the national website right now is, is rather difficult to navigate if you're looking for something. Um, you, you have to streamline it. But it is workable, and I think it's a good idea if you can get them tied in. But there again, um, in doing so, um, it's probably going to cost some money because you're probably going to have to end up hiring a professional. You know, and this goes back to the ideas that I'm talking about. You know, because I've been given a lot of good ideas, and some of the ideas that, that are passed to me, I know are not practical just from a financial aspect. So mm -hmm. we have to keep that in mind. But in our in our positions, we have to listen to those members and their ideas, you know, and every now and then you're going to get a good idea that's going to pop in there. And you're like, this is something we should approach the GEC with and have a conversation. Um, and it's one of the things that I think we need to start doing. So I like that idea. Me too. I Again, I, I love seeing uh, advances in our social media presence websites because i think that's a great way to get out in today's day and age um i don't know if we have any other questions so i'm going to give a last call for questions um make sure you go ahead and ask uh before we go off the air um mr if mr jamie gets a question we can share it on the facebook page but it would be better if you could share it here because this will be replayed closer to National Reunion, as everybody hopefully knows. That way, again, you can be reminded about everything Mr. Jamie said and, of course, make the best information on who you want to vote for. Um, we will have, again, two episodes for Army of Northern Virginia Commander, one episode for Army of Northern Virginia Councilman for you in the AMV. Um, so anybody have any questions? Uh, while y'all are typing that out, uh, Mr. Jamie, is there anything uh, you would like to say or kind of end the show on? Oh, you make me think. <laughs> um, I try. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I, I've been a leader in some form uh, for over 40 years. Um, mm -hmm. Whether I was leading a squad of soldiers into a combat zone or leading a group of pest control operators in my business. And uh, leading men requires communication. Uh, it requires attention to detail, understanding, some firmness, but some understanding. Um, but all of this is needed to accomplish the end goal in the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the end goal that we have here, saving our God-given birthright, the history of the Confederate soldier. Um, and I think, I think that we can do this. I, I, I want to see people really go back and understand our charge and mm -hmm. live our charge. Um, cause I, I live the charge daily. I believe in the charge. It, uh, you know, at my camp about 12 years ago when I was camp commander, um, I stopped reciting the charge in front of the camp. And I had the camp to start reciting the charge together. And now if you come to one of my camp meetings, when you walk in, you don't see my guys listening to someone. They stand up and they recite the charge from heart. Um, and, and I think that's one of the things I would love to see people start really understanding, you know, because our charge didn't tell us how we were supposed to do this. Our charge just told us we have to do this. Um, and I think a lot of people forget, too, that when General Lee gave that charge, he also gave four charges that day. 
Um, the first charge was to the mothers. Second charge was to us. Uh, the third charge was to um, the women. But it's that fourth charge that makes me think sometimes. It, uh, that charge was given to all American people. You know, and we've got a lot of like-minded people out there. Um, as some would like to call them Yankees, they're Northerners. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of like-minded people out there. I mean, I've got, uh, I've got uh, <laughs> one of our friends, him and his wife, Paul and Karen, they're from Connecticut. Um, we met them a few years ago at some of our heritage festivals and stuff that we were doing. They have started coming to our meetings regularly. Um, Paul is at just about every event that we do. Um, and so we, we've got people out there that are like-minded. We just got to reach out, touch them, and bring them into the fold. So how's those questions going? <laughs> Great. Uh, well, your statement was great. I, it feels like everybody is uh, not, not having anything. I think you answered everybody's questions pretty great, uh, Commander. So, uh, again, uh, please share this episode out, especially if you're in the Army of Northern Virginia. Let's try to get this out to as many people as we can. Uh, we have one more episode for the Army of Northern Virginia. Make sure you check all these out. Get as much information as possible and pray about it and vote who you, you want. Uh, if you need any questions asked, uh, you can contact us. We can uh, try to con get in contact with the ele uh, people running for office. Or, of course, you can contact them personally, however the elected our person running would prefer. But uh, thank you for coming on, uh, Mr. Jamie Graham. Uh, I want everybody to please thank him for coming on because it is kind of hard sometimes, especially with them uh, or with Jamie being in a uh, Eastern time instead of Central. He doesn't get the the blessings. It's it's about nine o'clock for him. So uh, we'll go ahead and end it. Uh, make sure you tune in this Monday to SCV Chat at seven p.m. Confederate Standard Time, and make sure again you send your pictures, short video, and write ups to SCV Youth Outreach at gmail.com, and you will be featured. On the upcoming episode of Look Around the Confederation, again, I'm asking if you have a Confederate Memorial Day event at your camp, brigade, division, any level, please send it our way. We will add it to the SEV website, which will be going back live by April 1st, so we can have that tool to celebrate Confederate History and Heritage Month. It is going to be a great one. I'm looking forward to April. I'm looking forward to being crazy busy. Uh, I, I, I lost the right to uh, not have a crazy April a long time ago, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So thank you all for tuning in. I hope to see you Monday. And remember, everybody, to stay Southern. Good night.